What's up, happy people? We're back. Um, this video, a little bit closer to what most of you guys are kind of used to, which is big stickback related. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, you may have seen an absolute cluster of different types of fishing related topics. Um, but this one, we're kind of going back to where my original video started, which is lure building. And it's mostly lure building, big GT lures, or use it for bluefin tuna, yellowfin, docktooth, anything else big and angry in the ocean. Um, so I thought this one might, might be an interesting video because this has been a completely different project. Um, all of my other projects have been uh, woodcalf based. And I always had the idea that at one point I wanted to make a design that I was gonna get molded and turn into a solid polymer stick bait. So it's gonna be stick bait design. Uh, now we've made a variety of lures um, in previous videos that you may have seen. Um, I kind of started with one of the first sort of pull test videos I put up was uh, from this particular stick bait. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Uh, not the best paint job on it, but it did have good foiling. Uh, great action on it. This was one of my first really well working big stick baits. Still love this lure today. It's got a great swimming action. It's very easy to use, um, and that's one of what was one of the keys that I kind of wanted to look into with um, the stick bait making because big stick baits for specifically GT fishing or GT style fishing sometimes are quite difficult to use. They're very finicky. They one they're very hard to make uh, because of how um, small of a window you have with the balancing. But as a result, if your hooks are not right, if the situation is not right, and it's not a properly made stick bait, it's not going to work. And there's plenty of stick baits on the market, and I'm not going to name the names. But um, there's plenty of stick baits on the market that are not cheap, but just don't work well. Um, so one of the things I wanted to look at is for it to be as easy to use as possible, used with a wide variety of hooks, and this was one of the first ones that uh, actually ticked all those boxes. Uh, then we followed up with couple more designs, this is another favorite. Uh, this paint job did work out a lot better, foiling is good. Uh, great action. Uh, what I was really looking for in the stick bait is that if you had a big heavy GT setup that you would have trouble casting for about an hour, let alone all day, um, you could just resort to casting the lure out, winding it, pausing it, let it sit and then winding it back in instead of having to use big rod sweeps all day. Um, fighting GT is tough, but working a big GT lure on a big GT rig, uh, not easy on the body either. So I wanted to, those lures to be easy to use. Um, and so this was another stick bait that um, fit that criteria. So eventually, we came closer and closer to the idea of like, well, if we combine these designs, if we use this really well, we kind of put these two together, uh, we might be able to eventually get it molded, uh, which is exactly what I got done. And obviously, we had to start from scratch, because what is your master? Well, chip away. This is all where it started. This is, I'm not kidding you, the cheapest, I think it's, a, it's not a 2x4. Uh, might be a 2x4. No. 
I don't even know what it is, but it's pine. It's very, very cheap. Very easy to cut, though, um, if you got a good sharp razor blade, that's all you need. Well, I use those box cutters anyway. They're easy to dispose, easy to get blades for, um, easy to use. And so eventually, after lots of whittling, and trust me, this takes at least a week of looking at this piece of wood that you're trying to design, uh, because after whittling away, your eyes kind of get used to the shape, and you cannot really see asymmetrical parts of that lure, which obviously you have to get rid of. Everything has to be symmetrical, because if you get this thing molded, if that thing is not symmetrical, your mold is going to be absolutely worthless because the lure is not going to swim. Um, eventually, we came up with this. So obviously, you can see that the, um, the face is carved in there. It's not balanced because it's just a master. Uh, but this was the design that I came up with. So it's got a, a pretty sort of steep, flat curve at the front here. And then a more gentle flat section in the front. And this would help it sort of dive down um, at the slightest line tension, which is key to getting that lure started properly. Um, it's kind of like an airplane design where the wing, where you want the air under the wing and that's where it's flat and there's like a hill, well not like a hill, but like a curve at the front of the wing so that there's less air passing over it. It's kind of like a similar idea. So, and as you, you know, you may have already picked up on this, but this particular wood design is sort of like a combination of these two, which is what I was going for. Both of these you can fish very well on a straight retrieve, super easy to use, and that's what I was going for with this. So, um, next step was the molding process. While I got that done, I am not familiar enough with the whole process um, to get that done properly myself. I didn't want to waste too much money, so I talked to somebody and they gave me a mold. And, um, now we're here, so we're actually molding this particular one, and we've got made the first couple ones, and they've turned out pretty darn good. The action's fantastic, it requires uh, minimal balance uh, weight for getting it to swim properly. It takes both single and treble belly hooks. Um, I do ideally fish with a single hook on the back anyway. I believe this also swims with trebles on the back, but I've just sort of tested it out for what I like fishing with and it takes both a really big treble or a really big single hook um, on the belly so the balance is right there this is one of the first ones I made you see this kind of like a sardine pattern I don't know how well you can see the foiling on that but it's pretty neat looking lower And then obviously we made a whole bunch more colors, so this is another favorite of mine. Gold wings, gold scale. Awesome looking lure. Very content with how that came out. And this one actually still needs an actual epoxy coat, funny enough, so. Um, well, let me just grab the rest and we did some Tiger pattern ones. We should do one for one. And then this one's more of a, a gold color. And then, last but not least, we got good old Red Dragon Arowana color pattern. This one also still needs an extra epoxy coat. Now obviously, you guys wanna see the pool test on these, so um, let's grab a couple of these and uh, we'll have a look how they swim. They're all the same design, so they're supposed to swim the same, which is 
what they do. So check it out. Now, before we make the final product, we obviously need to check with how durable the material was that I was gonna make them out of, i.e. the stuff that you put in the mold. Um, the way that I mold these is I make the wiring first, so the internal wiring that you see me put in wood designs uh, in plenty of my other videos. Um, that material needs to be buoyant enough to not only deal with the wire, which is quite heavy by itself, It's uh, I think two millimeter uh, stainless steel wiring. It's not not light stuff. Um, it's actually close to an ounce, I think, in total altogether. Uh, but it also obviously needs to deal with your terminal tackle and still remain buoyant because that is what we're aiming for. We're aiming for a, a buoyant stick bait. If they're this size and they're sinking, that's going to be a heavy lure. So right now these are already about 185 grams. Uh, that's a pre pretty pretty stiff lure to throw around and um, a sinking one would be quite a bit heavier than that. So that material had to be buoyant enough. So I had to make a combination of a, uh, a polymer resin as well as a, a floating resin in order to make it buoyant enough and strong enough at the same time, which is what eventually we came up with. Um, you're not going to get the recipe, sorry about that. <laughs> But um, there is plenty of stuff around that will do similar stuff. There's plenty of information um, on the internet to tell you all about that. Um, but we've uh, had to also think about how durable it was. And I'll tell you what, I've put this thing through its paces. I've used hammers, uh, leftover pieces of wood, thrown practically everything and the kitchen sink at it. Um, very, very tough stuff. Uh, in combination, that with a super thick epoxy coat, one as a base coat, uh, and then three over the total painted lure. It's a tough lure, so I'm very content with that. And at this point, I'm not sure if we will be selling these. I think I may make some available if people are interested. Uh, at the end of the day, this is a hobby for me. It's not something that I really am aiming to do um, to, to create a product that I want to sell. Um, the amount of time that goes in them, it's not very um, financially savvy to try and charge money for it. Uh, these things can take me days to make. But I did want to show everybody the whole process of it and well, at least the story behind it. There's enough video about the process of making stick baits. Um, again, it's a passion. And, uh, perhaps I'm making some more lures because I've made, well, I've made this together with a friend from Japan before, but um, we came up with the design and he sent me the original design and we crafted this um, blooping daughter. Another one of my, well, I mean, I say favorite about a lot of things, but it's, they're in, they're all in their own category, I guess. Um, Great lure, very heavy, but easy on a straight retrieve. You can use these as a popper, you can use them as a diving plug almost. Um, fantastic. And so I was thinking maybe I should just create another mold. So we've already got a wood cut out for another one of those. And uh, <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. We'll see what the future brings. Alrighty guys, that wraps it up. Uh, let me know what you think about these lures. Um, 
Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. I know this is kind of where the channel started off at, but being here in the United States, there's plenty more fishing opportunities. So um, you'll see a mixture of stuff, I guess. Um, if anybody's interested in any of these lures, let me know. I'm not necessarily planning on selling them, uh, but I guess you can have a look at uh, the lures here and um, see if anything specifically catches your eye. Um, you can always hit me up on uh, the email address linked to this channel. Um, thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.